This is part 15 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video and in the next few videos, we'll discuss form validation in Angular with simple examples. We'll discuss validating text boxes, check boxes, radio buttons, drop down lists, etc. We'll also discuss how to fix one of the common errors that we get when exporting ng model directive into a local template variable. The error that we get is this cannot assign to a reference or variable. We'll discuss what causes this error and how to fix it. To understand form validation in Angular, we need to understand these three sets of properties touched, untouched, pristine, dirty, valid and invalid. These six properties are available at an each individual form control level and also at the entire form level. So first let's look at these properties in action at an individual form control level. Notice this full name input field. We made this field required by including this required attribute. Required is HTML5 validation attribute. Basically this attribute specifies that this full name field is required. In addition to required, we have many other HTML5 validation attributes like max length, pattern, min, max, etc. To learn more about these HTML5 validation attributes, visit this URL right here. I'll have this link available both in the description of this video as well as on my blog. We will discuss most of these attributes with examples in our upcoming videos. The point to keep in mind is Angular uses these HTML5 validation attributes for validating form fields and displaying validation error messages. Now we already know about this ng model directive. This directive provides two-way data binding that is it keeps this full name input field and its corresponding property full name in the component class in sync. Now what I'm going to do is export this ng model directive into a local template reference variable. And the way we do that is like this. First we create a variable and we use the hash symbol. And then let's call this variable full name. And I'm going to export ng model directive into this local template reference variable called full name. Now different people call this variable with different names. Some people simply call it local variable, some people call it template variable and some people call it local template reference variable. At this point let's save our changes and then take a look at the browser. Notice we don't have anything displayed in the web page. And at the moment we are on the console tab and look at the error that we have. Cannot assign to a reference or variable. First let's understand what's causing this error. If we take a look at the template, here we have set the name attribute to full name and ng model also to full name. And we know what this is going to do. The Angular generated form model is going to automatically create a property with full name and that property keeps track of whatever we type into this full name input field. And look at what we are doing here. We are also creating a local template reference variable with the same name, full name. Hence, we get this error we cannot assign to a reference or variable. So basically this is complaining that we cannot assign this ng model directive to a reference or a variable. There is already a variable called full name. So we cannot assign this ng model directive again to that variable. There are two ways we can fix this error. One way is by using our own model instead of the Angular auto-generated form model. Now if you recollect from our previous videos, we already have a model for employee and that is present in this file employee.model.ts. We'll discuss using this employee model instead of the Angular auto-generated form model in our upcoming videos. Now the other way to fix this error is by giving our local template reference variable a different name other than full name. So let's call this full name control instead of full name. Notice we have the form displayed as expected and we don't have any validation errors. Now we are going to use this local template reference variable full name control to access those three sets of validation properties touched, untouched, dirty, pristine, valid and invalid. So just below this full name input field let's create another div element and first we want to display touched property value. So touched is the display text here and then we are going to use interpolation and let's use this template reference variable full name control and on that we can use the touch property like that. 
and we'll be able to see whether if this full name control is touched or not. And similarly, to access the untouched property, first let's change the display text to untouched and the property name is untouched. Notice we have touched and untouched properties below the full name field. Let's zoom in a bit. Notice the full name field is not touched yet, so touched property is false. Now when I click within the full name field, notice the touched property is still false. These properties change only when the respective field loses focus. Notice when I tab out of the full name field, the properties change automatically. Touched is now true and untouched is false. Now, I'm going to paste in some HTML here. Now, if you notice this HTML, this is pretty straightforward. All we are doing is creating a table and we are displaying those six validation properties and their values. So let's save our changes and then quickly take a look at the browser. Notice we have the six validation properties and their values in a table as expected. We already discussed touched and untouched properties. Now let's discuss pristine and dirty. Pristine means the form field has not been changed, whereas dirty means it has been changed. At the moment, we have not changed full name field, so pristine is true and dirty is false. So look at what happens to these two properties when we change the text within the full name field. So as soon as I start typing, look at what happened to pristine. It changed it to false and dirty changed to true. And even after I delete everything that I have typed within the full name field, notice still pristine is false and dirty is true. That's because we have changed the full name field. Now let's reset the form by reloading it again so we can discuss valid and invalid properties. At the moment, full name is a required field and we did not type anything within the full name field. So valid is false and invalid is true. Now look at what happens as soon as I start typing. Valid is true and invalid is false. Now we also have these same six properties at the form level. Now if we take a look at the form tag, notice we are already exporting the ng form directive into this local template reference variable employee form. So we can use this variable now to access those six validation properties at the form level. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a copy of this HTML table and then we will use the employee form template reference variable to access the validation properties at the form level. So let's copy our form level template reference variable which is employee form and then change the variable here to employee form instead of full name control. So we can access the validation properties at the form level. And let's also change the text here to employee form instead of full name. Notice we have the validation properties both at the form level and at the full name field level. Now let's make our email field also required. Now before that, between the two tables that displays the validation properties, let's include an HTML break. And then let's also make this email input field required by including the HTML5 required attribute. Notice the touched property at the full name field level and at the form level. Both of them are false. Now look at what happens when the full name field receives focus and when it loses focus, touched of the full name field becomes true and the touched property at the form level also becomes true. The same is true for dirty and pristine properties. Now let's take a look at the final set of validation properties, valid and invalid. Notice the valid property of full name field is false and the valid property at the form level is also false. Now look at what happens when we type something in the full name field. The valid property of the full name field becomes true, but the valid property at the form level is still false. Why is that? That's because remember, we made this email field also required. At the moment, email field is not valid, hence the form is not valid. And look at what happens as soon as we type something in the email field, the email field becomes valid, so does the form. So all the fields on the form are valid, so the form is also valid. This brings us to a very important conclusion. If all the form fields are valid, then the form itself is valid. 
if any of the form fields are invalid then the form is also invalid along the same lines if we have touched any of the form field then the form is marked as touched and along the same lines if any of the field is dirty then the form is also marked dirty now we included this HTML right here to demonstrate validation properties we don't need these two tables anymore so to keep our form clean let's delete that HTML so to check if a form field is valid first include the HTML5 validation attributes such as required for example on the input field that you want to validate in our case we want to validate the full name input field and we want to make it required so we are using the HTML5 required attribute on that full name field and then export the ng model directive to a local template reference variable so in this case we are exporting the ng model directive of the full name field into a local template reference variable with the name full name control and then finally we can use this local template reference variable to access the three sets of validation properties touched dirty valid pristine etc to check if the entire form is valid export the ng form directive to a local template reference variable this is very similar to exporting ng model directive to a local template reference variable and then we use that local template reference variable to access the three sets of validation properties available at the form level in our next video we'll discuss how to display validation error messages thank you for listening and have a great day